since the release of the T250, a lot has happened. In just the first week, over 50 people decided to build their own T250 and by the time this video goes live, most of them should have received all their parts and are about to start building. Which means they're standing exactly where I stood 8 months ago. Now, there's this classic philosophical question. If you could travel back in time and give your past self one piece of advice, what would it be? Well, today I'm not giving you one advice, I'm giving you five. Five hard learned lessons I wish I had to know when I started building the T250. Mistakes that cost me time, nerves and in one case a full week of rebuilding things I thought were already done. So if you're about to start your build, take a deep breath and let this video save you from the mistakes I have made for you. Hey and welcome back to my channel. I'm Matt the Printing Nerd and in this video I want to save you from 5 mistakes you should avoid when building a T250. Let's start with something that many of you probably consider as basic 3D printing knowledge. Over tightening screws into PLA causes creep. When tightening a screw into a plastic part, you've introduced mechanical stress. And over time, the stress causes the plastic to relax, which means the material slowly deforms and the tension in the joint drops. The screw doesn't come loose because it turns, it comes loose because the plastic around it gives up. There is actually a proper name for this, it's called stress relaxation. In fact, all thermoplastics exhibit stress relaxation to some degree. It's a side effect of being made of long polymer chains. But with PLA, that effect is even more pronounced because PLA has relatively short molecular chains compared to other plastics, so it relaxes faster and further. I found a great chart from Entel C on Reddit, where he shared test data on this topic. It shows that the more stress you apply to PLA, the more it deforms over time. But, and this is the interesting part, if the stress stays low enough, there's almost no deformation at all. So, when you're assembling your frame, of course you want everything to feel solid. But there's a difference between a solid joint and the little extra torque that's simply too much. Now, I don't have a specific torque value to share because honestly, I did all of it by feel. And that's also what I recommend. Develop a feel for it. So, as soon as your first parts are printed, add threaded inserts to them and assemble a few test joints with different torque levels. Let them sit overnight and see which ones loosened. That's how you learn to recognize the point just before you overdo it. Because trust me, it's a lot better to learn that early than to finish the entire build and then realize half of your screws came loose along the way. The T250 isn't one solid block. It's a structure made of dozens of printed parts bolted together. And that means one thing is guaranteed. Your frame won't be perfectly square out of the box. I designed the connectors with tight tolerances in mind, but a bit of slack is needed for easy assembly. And that slack adds up. If you skip proper alignment, you'll end up with weird mechanical issues. Belt tension will be inconsistent, input shaper curves will look unpredictable and while firmware features like twist compensation exist, nothing beats starting with a physical straight frame. The T250 is built for speed and speed doesn't forgive sloppiness. So here's the method I wish I had known earlier. Once the main frame is assembled, but before mounting the belts and all the gantry parts, lose all the screws. Then place something heavy, like 20 or 30 kilograms of books on top of the frame and let it settle overnight. This helps the frame to align itself naturally. The next morning carefully retightening each screw in a circular pattern without moving or lifting the frame. That locks everything into place without building up stress. I realized that I had to square the frame after spending 4 weeks of tuning the printer and I had to repeat almost all of the tuning for a second time. You can't imagine the frustration I had back then, so don't repeat my mistakes and square your frame before you start tuning. 
Alright, let's talk about the carriage. The T250 extruder motor is mounted directly inside the tool head's carriage, right at the center of gravity. It's great for performance, but there's one big catch. Heat. Those little pancake motors can get hot. Like, really hot. I ran a test series on Patreon to compare pancake motors for the T250 and even the best performing ones still reach up to 50 degrees over ambient temperature during regular prints. Now imagine it's summer, your room already is at 30 degrees celsius and you're pushing the printer hard so motor temps of 80 to 100 degrees celsius are not unusual. So you really need to print the carriage and the extruder parts in a heat resistant material. For my T250 I went with carbon fiber reinforced nylon. Nylon, especially when reinforced, can handle much higher temperatures. Some blends go up to 150 to 180 degrees Celsius before softening. It gives you a ton of headroom, especially if you're pushing the machine hard like I do. Now, I actually have a lot of experience printing nylon. In my day job, CF nylon is our go-to material for functional prototypes. But here's the thing. At work, we have everything you need for a smooth nylon printing workflow. We've got heated filament storages, fully profiled machines with years of tuning behind them, active heated chambers, special build plates, all the stuff I don't have at home. My filament dryer tops out at 60 degrees Celsius, my printer is enclosed but there is no active chamber heating and since I rarely print nylon at home I had to rely on generic slicer profiles which were far from perfect. On top of that nylon shrinkage is a real problem. Unlike PLA your part dimensions will shift if you don't compensate for it. So I had to reprint the carriage and the extruder parts multiple times just to get them dimensionally accurate. Every morning started the same. Dry the filament in the kitchen's oven for 5 hours, squeeze maybe 2 or 3 good prints, then redry for the next batch. So yeah, nylon is annoying to print. Sure, you could try another heat resistant filament like PC, PP, PPS or PET, but let's be honest, none of them are exactly beginner friendly either. I chose nylon because I knew what I was getting into. But if you've already worked with some other heat resistant filaments and you know how to handle them, go with the material you're comfortable printing and get a reliable part without losing your sanity. And for those who don't or who just don't want to deal with the hassle, let me introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. Yes, they're known for their PCBs, but did you know that they also offer 3D printing services? And I actually use them. Especially for prints that are notorious annoying to print at home. Like for example nylon. It warps, it absorbs moisture and it's just a hassle to print. So I outsource that headache to PCBWay and let them deal with it. But here's the cool part. PCBWay has a project platform and that's where things get interesting. As a creator, I can set up a ready to order kit for my designs, like the toolhead kit for the T250. So you don't have to worry about material shrinkage, about tolerance issues and whatever the part will even fit. I've already tested everything, tuned the tolerances and bundled it up all for you. Just one button click and a few days later all the parts for your T250's toolhead show up at your door, done, easy. Thanks to PCBWay for supporting this project and now let's jump back to the video. Let's talk about cables. One of the coolest things about the T250 is how clean it looks when it's done. All the cables are hidden inside the frame which gives the printer its clean and minimalistic look. But there's a downside. If you ever want to change an electronic part like swapping the motors or replacing a broken fan, you'll have to disassemble the frame to remove the part because the cables run through the frame. And that makes part replacement a nightmare. Let me give you an example. Let's say you want to upgrade your motors. Well, if your motor cables are soldered directly to the motor, you have to. 
Untension the belt, disassemble the frame to assess the motor cables, replace the motor, reassemble the frame, realign the entire structure, retention the belts and redo your input shaper tuning. It's a disaster. In an early alpha version of the T250, I had a gantry setup that applied way too much radial force to the motors. And I actually managed to bend a motor shaft. And because all my cables were hardwired, I had to take the entire frame apart just to swap that one motor. That one mistake cost me two full weeks of development time and a good chunk of motivation. From that point on, I started adding connectors to everything. Motors, fans, thermistors, LED stripes, anything that runs through the frame got a connector. So I could replace it later without disassembling the frame again. So if you've never crimped a cable before, now is the time to learn. Get yourself a decent crimping set, grab some JST connectors and start practicing. Yes, it's a bit of work up front, but trust me, you save so much frustration down the line, it's totally worth it. Let's talk about mods. If you've spent any time in the 3D printing scene, especially in the open source communities like Voron or Rhetoric, you've definitely seen those build threads where people don't just build the base design, they immediately stack dozens of mods on top of it, right from day one. And I get it, I've done it too. It's part of turning a machine into your machine. It's part of the fun. And the temptation is real. The T250 Discord is full of cool ideas, upgrades, experimental parts, aesthetic tweaks. It's easy to scroll through printables and think, oh yeah, that fan duct looks cooler. Um, I think I swapped this part. Um, let's go with a lightweight gantry upgrade. I mean, why not? But here's the thing. The T250 is not a beginner printer and installing too many mods too early can completely wreck your experience. Most of the mods out there were created by experienced builders who already had a fully tuned printer. They knew how to test changes in isolation, one mod at a time with a known baseline. But if you change a dozen things at once while building your printer, debugging becomes a nightmare. Welcome to integration hell. Sure, getting a complex build like this up and running takes time. That's normal. But every mod you add increases the risk that this frustrating, energy draining phase stretches even longer. And that's where motivation starts to fade. And the worst part, once your build drifts too far away from a stock reference, the community, including me, will probably struggle to help you. You'll be running into issues we've never seen before and your frustration will grow even further. That's why my recommendation is simple. Build the stock version first. Get it running, get it tuned, print some calibration and stress tests, run a few speedboats, reach the point where you feel confident so that you've established your own baseline. Once that's in place, then start exploring. Add mods one at a time, test them, compare results, treat it a bit like a DLC content for your game that you already love. Because if you change everything at once and it all goes wrong, you'll burn out fast and that would be a shame, because when the T250 runs right, it's absolutely insane. So take your time, build it clean and mod it later. Right when I was about to finish this video, someone in the community shared a post on X with me. And at the moment I saw it, I knew this needs to be part of this video. For those who don't speak Japanese, the user wrote something like this. Since the structure is made entirely of 3D printed parts and contains no aluminium extrusions, the individual components naturally undergo significant deformation and the screws can only be tightened using clamps. And honestly, I was kinda shocked. When I designed the frame joints, I made sure to leave enough slack between the parts to allow for stress-free assembly. I double-checked this with my Patreon alpha testers and over 20 people who printed the frame in PLA, in ABS or ASA confirmed the tolerances in the step files are tight but not too tight. But I've seen similar issues before, especially from some early T100 builds. And I can tell you, this is not a design flaw. It's almost always a printer that's not properly calibrated. Those frame parts are chunky and even a small skew in your printer, we're talking about 0.1 degree, can result in 0.2 or 0.4 millimeters of deformation on such large parts. 
and that's more than enough to ruin a whole build. So here's what I recommend before printing your frame. Run a skew test. Tests like Vector 3D skew calibration tests are incredibly helpful. It takes about 30 minutes and it might save you kilograms of wasted filament. Then measure your first printed part. Check if it's dimensionally accurate because all polymers shrink to some extent. So make sure the tolerances are on point before you commit to printing the rest. When it comes to shrinkage, most of the slicers have built-in values, but they're just a starting point. Shrinkage is affected by a bunch of factors. Enclosure or not, chamber temperature, material properties, extrusion multipliers. So if you never printed parts this big before, chances are high that your default values are not dialed in properly. So before you commit 1 kilogram of filament and 20 hours of printing time, take the time to calibrate your printer properly. Alright, before we wrap up this video, let's take a quick look at the part we've just printed. If you're one of my Patreons, you probably recognize this already. It's my first prototype of a CPAP muffler, which I currently design for the next iteration of the T250. I'm testing a jet fan style blower as a replacement for the WS7040 pump and I've been sharing all the results and findings with my supporters. As always, every part that makes the cut will be freely available once the next printer version is released, but if you like to have early access to the step files, the test data or just want to support me and the project, consider becoming a Patreon. With that said, I hope this video saves you a few weeks, a few reprints and maybe a little bit of sanity. If you found this video helpful, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon so you won't miss the next video and as always, thanks for watching, thanks to everyone who is building, testing and pushing the T250 forward and now get out of here.